I'm getting really tired of blowing on everything. So I think it's time to harness the power of steam. Hi, I'm Ronnie, and this is Camille. And in this video series, I will be making a steampunk strand piece. A few years ago, I designed this strand piece kit. It is a wooden model. Uh, the plans are available in the description below. The original strand piece was, of course, made by Theo Janssen, a Dutch artist, and this is my take on it. A few years after that, I made this pneumatic engine. And both of them work by blowing on them. And I got a bit tired of blowing on everything, so I decided I'm going to try to use a pneumatic engine, harness the power of steam, and mount it on the strand piece. Wood is of course not uh, the best material to use when you are using steam, so I decided I'm going to use a metal lathe that I've thus far only been using for woodworking. I made a chest set from it, and I'm going to use brass and uh, aluminium, and I'm going to make a pneumatic engine and mount it on a wooden strand piece to see if I can make a real steampunk strand piece. The only thing I've made thus far that's metal on the metal lathe is this small aluminium adapter. And I think it's going to be a bit of a learning curve to make this engine in metal, but I'm going to give it a try. I also have two coffee pots here that I'm going to use for the boiler. Since I'm making two steam-driven strand piece, but I need only one, I'm going to give away one of them at the end of this video series. And I'm also going to give away one strand piece kit uh, with each video, but more information about that a bit later. The first step of this project is of course to build the engine to see if I can make something that is actually driven by steam that's made from metal. So let me start with that. My idea for the engine is to use this type of engine, an oscillating engine, and it's basically just a cylinder and a piston that is attached to a crankshaft and a flywheel. So as steam enters one of the valves, it will push this, the piston forward, it will rotate, and as it rotates, the engine itself or the cylinder itself will change position, and then an uh, exit valve opens up and the piston is pushed back by the momentum of the flywheel. And then as it turns, it aligns with the input valve again, and steam will enter again and push the piston out. So there's two holes at the back. It's an input and an output. And as the steam pushes in, it will start rotating this engine. The first step is, however, to make the cylinders and see if I can get the pistons made as well. I completed the two cylinders and the two piston heads and this was a bit challenging because I haven't worked on the lathe that much but I, I think it turned out quite nicely. So if I pull them out quickly you can hear the nice sound it makes which is what you want to hear. A bit of a vacuum created and I have a small uh, indentation around each of the cylinders 
And I hope that when I add a bit of oil, it will form a complete seal and they fit quite nicely. So if I put them in and uh, just leave it, it goes down really slowly because the air forms a bit of a seal. So next up is the small engine block on which it would be mounted and then the back side of the engine block. So the engine mountings or the engine blocks are completed and they turned out less than optimal. Um, I think I need a milling tool to make these grooves a bit better. The drill didn't work as well but I didn't expect it to work perfectly. I wanted it to work better but it didn't. So with the Dremel I shaped them a bit more so they're now a bit more oversized than I hoped for but I think it will still work. I'm going to try hide these flaws and imperfections with solder. Uh, another technique that I haven't used before, so we'll see how that goes. On to soldering. So this is the soldered piece and I'm extremely happy with how it turned out. It's not perfect, I think it's okay for a first time soldering. But it did cover the open gaps really, really nice. I'm happy that it filled it in so nicely. And now I will drill through into the cylinder. I'm, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I'm pleased with the first time soldering. But let me finish this bit and see if I can continue making the rest of this engine into a working engine. So this is the test of the oscillating engine. It is powered by air through the small valve and then down on the floor there's a small pump. The pump is just the air pump that they use for ponds. The pump is connected to the valve and then the valve is connected to the input. But this is just a proof of concept to see that everything is actually running. And I will turn it on now and then we'll see if it goes. So with the prototype working, I need to replace a lot of the wooden parts with metal parts. So on to a montage of me making metal steam engine pieces. The problem is that the tube that I want to use is too thick to fit around both of these simultaneously. So I want to bend these small pipes and I came up with a solution that kind of helps. So I fill the small pipe with the filler and then I can bend it. And when I bend it, it makes a better curve than if I were just to try and bend it, which will make kinks in it. I will replace the wooden rod with a metal rod and the metal is just a piece of metal that I have been confiscated from a barbecue fork 
the attachment that will go onto the crankshaft I've made off camera and it has a small hole on the side and which I can screw the rod. So I will screw it in place and I will glue it in place with super glue to start off with. I can always solder it later on, but for now I'll glue it in place to make it removable if I need to make any adjustments. And this just screws on. There are many more threads, so it's okay to not glue them. So now most of the parts are metal and it runs much better than the wooden version alone. I'm quite pleased with, with how well it runs with the newer parts. One of the things that I will address is some of the mistakes that I've made. And one that I can mention now is the pivot point of this engine is on this side, which is usually not a problem, except that the engine block is so short that it has too much play. So even with the spring in it, it opens up and you lose steam through here. So one of the fixes that I will add is I'm going to put a small rubber band to keep it tight. So I will show how it runs now and also how much efficiency is increased when I just pull this axle a bit tight. This is the next step in the making of the steam engine. So I've replaced the base. I redesigned the base to make it a bit more stable. The last thing that I will do is I will remove some of the weight from the crank to serve as a counterweight. Here is just a quick comparison between the weighted and unweighted crank. I think the weighted crank reduces the vibration quite a bit. So I think this is the end of the video here for, for this part of the project. And I'm really happy this is the final design for now. And uh, the metal parts are mostly made for the engine itself. And I'm really happy with how much I have accomplished. I have to admit that I've learned quite a lot through this process. It's been quite a learning curve. Wood and metal is not the same. I didn't think it is, but I didn't think it was so much different. I can also say that I really, really dislike working with copper. It is not a nice metal. It is sticky and I'm going to avoid it where possible. I also have to mention the channel Blondie Hacks by Quinn. It's a brilliant YouTube channel that teaches you all things about metalworking and machining and working on the lathe. And without this channel, I would have really struggled. So I would like to just mention that this is a really, really good channel to go and have a look at if you are making anything in metal uh, and are just starting out. So thanks to them. Hello, Internet. My name is Quinn, and this is Blondie Hacks. So I think it's OK for a first time project. I am reasonably proud of myself. I'm not completely satisfied with all the small mistakes and flaws and details that I could have done better, but I do think that I will improve in skill as I 
it's do more metal working. But it is good enough for this machine to work really, really well, given all the limitations, inconsistencies, and my newness to machining metal parts. I'm happy with how the soldering and the metal working turned out. So I made two. So this is the one, and this is parts for the second one. And I'm not sure what to do with the second one. I thought I want to give it away to one of the viewers, but I'm slightly worried that there is a bit of steam that's going to come out of it and it might be a bit risky to use. So if you have any suggestions of what I should do with the second one, or if you think it's still a good idea to give it away, let me know in the comments. I am going to give away a strand pierced kit that builds into this model to each of the videos in this series. So if you're interested in winning one, um, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. And the most upvoted comment, uh, I will contact the person who left that comment and will, I will ship it out anywhere in the world. The next video, I'm going to make a boiler. So stay tuned for that. It might be interesting. And they will, of course, be a bit more metalworking for that itself. If you're still watching, please consider subscribing. It really helps the channel a lot. And you will be notified when I combine all these elements into one machine that will work on its own. Thanks to the Patreon members who support this channel. Uh, it makes it possible for me to spend a bit of money on getting some of the equipment that I need to make these machines. Also, if you're interested in the plans, some of the plans for some of the machines, like the Strand Beast, is available on the website. And I also have some free plans for other things that I've made before. So have a look at the Patreon site. It's more than just subscribing to support me. And with that, the only thing that I need to say is thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy this content and see you in the next one. Cheers.